join our security team. In case you missed it, a zero-day exploit was recently published for the popular Java logging library Log4j, which impacted the whole internet. It's so easy to exploit and hackers were so quick to pick up and start exploiting this uh, wide impact vulnerability. And we saw some, some indicators of attack on our, uh, in our logging system. Let me show you what we saw. Here we can see uh, that hackers were attempting to exploit this vulnerability quite quickly uh, once they, the exploit was published. Basically, these hackers were trying to create a tunnel to their uh, own servers in order to uh, compromise our private servers. Let's dive deeper into how this exploit works. Basically, we're going to just grab a vulnerable application from GitHub uh, a sample application that has the vulnerability inside of it, and then try to exploit it with the publicly uh, published uh, GNDI uh, exploit kit, which is specially crafted to uh, leverage this exploit and do some post-exploitation post steps afterwards. So here we have our uh, vulnerable app started up, and then we will start up the uh, GNDI exploit kit, which was tailored for this uh, vulnerability, which also has some bypass techniques for any WAF protections that you might have in place, as well as uh, some post-exploitation uh, techniques embedded inside of it. So let's see what that looks like. Basically here we've started an LDAP listener and an HTTP uh, web server serving our malicious uh, commands and um, binaries. And then we uh, we trigger the exploit by simply sending uh, a web request and injecting the vulnerable or the uh, exploit string inside one of the headers. And here we see the stack trace of the uh, exploit causing an error, as well as a response in our uh, listening where a request for the LDAP has been made and an HTTP response uh, serving this uh, lookup. So here we will uh, show you uh, that we touched basically a file on this uh, vulnerable application. Basically, if we go into temp, we see pound, which is a file that we created basically if we decode this base64 string, base64, we see it will run this command, and that's why we see that file being created. We at Picnic became aware of this vulnerability immediately and started to mitigate and contain the different attacks conducted by, by different hackers all around the world, attempting to compromise our servers. We first identified the different uh, in-house built software that depended on that library, and then we moved into investigating and setting up alerts for the different variations or uh, mutations of the string that triggers the vulnerability. This allowed our software engineering uh, teams to uh, immediately address the issue and apply the, the required uh, updates. Our infrastructure team then addressed the issue by applying custom rules to detect the different mutations of that vulnerability. We also proactively reached out to our different partners and third-party service providers to immediately ask them to address this issue if they were uh, indeed uh, vulnerable to it. The key factor to the success of this incident response was that we had a, already identified all of the different assets at Picnic. And by assets, I mean software assets. We had a very clear understanding of what are the different technologies and tech stack that we use, and we were able to quickly and immediately identify those with the biggest risk. You can read more on our blog how we increase the security awareness at Picnic and also subscribe to this channel to hear more about tech-related topics.